Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. And we have some special guests here today talking about tonight's Battle of 840. Coach Chris Hughes, Fairview High School. Coach Charles Rathbone, Page High School. Gentlemen, appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to be here. Thank you for having us. Now, listen, guys, it's like a special day because it's been over a year since we've had an in-studio coaches show, and you guys are the ones. What do you think about that, Coach? It's good to have some normalcy. So <laughs> no, I, I like that we'll have fans tonight, and, and things are going to feel like, like we've got football back again. I'm just glad you chose to bring back the lookers first. And, and else went, so. <laughs> Rathbone and I are the two best-looking coaches that we have together. <laughs> well, I was going to say people are saying that, but I didn't know well, if you Well, Coleman and Kreisky up. think a lot of themselves, so I don't know. But. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this may be the only uh, coaches show we have for football where we don't have at least one slick head. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm getting we close, both. though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting close. <laughs> uh -oh. Hey, let's talk about this. And I know we've mentioned this with this game happening. We'll start with Coach Hughes. It's not a region game, but you kind of know football has started when you talk about the Battle of 840 because it's been the first game for you guys for a while. It has, and I don't think Rathbone or me, either one, really enjoy playing the first game. <laughs> it's hard to prepare because we just don't know what each other have. But... The, uh, the other thing about it is it's a litmus test for both of us. So you kind of know how your season's going to go based on how. And, and it doesn't matter if you win or lose. If you compete and you're real close and you're like, man, I got a good team and we hung with them, then you know you're going to have a good season. If you get blown out, then I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're going to you know, we fix some things. And I think he's the same as me. We use it to kind of tweak what we're doing, get ready for our region contest because we can find out who needs to be playing where. We had somebody out of position. Um, it's just really tough competition starting the year out, but it's a great way for us to measure ourselves, basically. Coach, Rathbone? You know, I think it's just fun to play two very similar schools. You know, that's, that's really uh, focused on more of a rural communities, and, and these kids, you know, they act like they don't like each other, but then they're hugging each other after the game and getting to know each other. And, you know, so it's a fun atmosphere, and it's always, but, but he's right, you know, trying to figure out what the other team's going to do from scrimmages and it's who tough. the real guys are that's going to be playing from scrimmages. I mean, it's tough, and you don't really – to me, this is the hardest game of the year. I mean, it just is. And, you know, I, I love Chris to death, but and it has nothing to do with who we're playing. It's just when we're playing. Yeah. So, and it's uh, – and there's a lot of pressure on this game, right? You know, you want to beat your county, rival, county rivals. And so all of that going into the first week, I just – you know, I'll be glad to get it started tonight and, and see how we're going to play. and go from there. I well, think we both say it. we're glad when this week's over yeah. so we can get ready you get ready for a region contest but um, that pressure is good and it always feels good to win but it really hurts to lose so you know one of us is going to feel that way and the other is going to feel that way and you still have that compassion for each other you know like I had like last year I, I, I didn't think we would win that game and when we did I was like wow and then I felt that for him because he's got to start rebuild go through his thing so um, and we went through it three years before that, so he knows how I feel too. Well, it's a great rivalry. I think you always know it's a big time rivalry when you've got a name for the game. Battle of 840, we've got this beautiful Battle of 840 trophy here. Uh, we were counted up before the show. This will be the 34th time these teams have met. Page leads 2013, Coach Rathbone had mentioned, and I had that in my notes, I had the last seven years, but he mentioned to me it's six and five over the last 11 years, so it's obviously pretty close. I know Coach Rathbone and Paige, you're, you guys are looking to change the logo that's on the front right now. We've got that inner, we've got that changeable plate on the front, so we'll see if it remains Fairview or if we change that over to Paige. Well, that's obviously the goal for both teams, so. It is. And you that's guys a nice trophy. So you did a good job on that there. Well, you did I, a good job on that. That well, trophy looks really nice. It's a lot nicer than people know a couple years ago. You know, so well, you did a good job on it. It's worthy of the game. I'll put it, it that It looks way. real good with that F on the front. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it there. <laughs> hey, listen, now, the other thing we've got going on tonight, not only WCTV Game of the Week, but also game day. It's our first game day in over a year. Uh, Coach Rathbone, you guys are the home team. Hopefully you're hearing a little bit of hype at the school about tonight's game day, but we think that's pretty special too. An hour before the game, we'll be out there. Uh, Dr. Qualls, Tate, Matthews, and myself. Uh, you guys will come up for an interview. We'll interview your principals, your student sections. will be all fired up about it. Hopefully, being the home team, they're coming out tonight. 
I sure hope so. There's a lot of buzz around the school, you know, and the new building opening up this year and Dr. Hill in her first real year, non-COVID year. And so the kids are excited and walk around the hallways and you can just see, feel an energy that hasn't been there last year for obvious reasons. And, you know, so it's this whole normalcy and getting back to real life. And I think it's great for the kids. And I think having, having the opportunity to host game day for our kids, is just a, it's a blessing for us that our kids will get to host that and, and get to participate and, and hopefully uh, do the community proud. I'm sure you will. Coach Hughes, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, the first game on turf that was played at Page was Page Fairview. If you guys would have had the opposite location, but it didn't work out that way. Page would have been our first. Yes, we could have opened yeah. that, that turf. So talk about it. I know we've got I'm still. I'm glad that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've, got a, I know I we've got a few things to still do, but right. talk. I know you've been one that's been particularly excited about Man, getting that turf. You know what? And there's all kind of hiccups that happen, but I'm so, uh, I feel fortunate that we're going to have that opportunity for our kids to play on artificial surface and just how nice it is and how, there's just so much buzz around that, which means next week our home opener is going to be real exciting at Fairview. And then the kids are pumped. But I, I think uh, Rathbone's going to have a good gate tonight because uh, I think we're going to bring a really good crowd to Page. I too. bet you will. Yeah. I bet you will. Hey, let's talk a little bit. Uh, again, we mentioned uh, the history of this game. Last year, Fairview with an 18-3 win broke a three-game Page winning streak. Uh, again, 20-13 and 13 overall. Uh, in this particular game, if I'm not mistaken, Coach Rathbone five and four, Coach Hughes six and eight during his time as the head coach uh, of Fairview. Coach Hughes, let's start with you. You end up seven and four last year. You end up being the region runner-up. Your championship streak was broken. Uh, you lost in the first round for the second time in a row, which is not typical of your team. Most people would look at seven and four and region runner-up and go, "Hey, that's a, that's you know, hey, that's fine." But I could tell media day that your players, you, it's almost got you like you have a little chip on your shoulder to say, let's get this back to region championship type of team again. Is that uh, something you guys have talked about a lot? The days of uh, Fairview celebrating making it to the playoffs are way past. <laughs> um, you know, when I first got there, we get to the playoffs and everybody was ecstatic. And now if we don't make it to the third round, you know, what, what happened, you know? and. Uh, the expectations are higher, and the last two years we've had, there's many reasons that that has happened. I've had some good teams, you know, so it also falls back in my lap. Um, but we've got to get over that hump, and I think this group, uh, I, the best thing about this team, I, I love the kids I have this year. Uh, it's not the most talented group I've ever had, but I think overall I've enjoyed coaching them. They're good character kids, they work hard, and we're gonna see if we can put that together. But those guys want to win. And the first round of playoffs is not going to be uh, acceptable for them. So. Well, and Coach, talk about this. I mean, you talk about you've, you've sort of created those expectations, but I feel like you have those same kinds of expectations. You were disappointed. Oh, really? Openly disappointed about Yeah, well, I mean, we, we expect every year – our goal is to make it a state championship, and we've never done that. But we preach to our kids that's the ultimate goal. If we stop having that goal, I'm going to find something else to do because you want to be – at the end of the year, that one team left. Now, you got a bus on Alcoa sitting over there, plus you got to get through all the Metro and West Tennessee teams to get there. But I think our kids have got to visualize it and see it. And this group seems to be more focused on getting better and getting over that hump and not losing in the first round of playoffs again. You know, two years in a row, we're just not used to it. And that last, you know, you get all year to get that taste in your out of your mouth because you yeah. when you lose that last game and everybody does it but one team in every right. class, uh, but you've got the whole year to just sit there and and just let it swelter up and uh, and this group has really like you said they've got a chip on their shoulder and and we'll know kind of where we're going what we need to work on after we play a really good five A opponent in Page tonight. Coach Brett Rathbone, your team last year. You'd lost a lot of, to graduation going into last year, and I think a lot of people at the beginning of the year, if they would have said, okay, they've won a couple region championships, they lost a lot, no way they go 5-5. Five and five. No way they make the playoffs, but your team did that. Uh, so you were a young team last year, but now a little bit more experience going into this year after last year's season. Yeah, and it was a tough start for us last year. I mean, 
return, replacing 20 starters and not having a preseason and, and really a weight room offseason, which we really value our time in the weight room and in the summer, those things. And so I thought, you know, I thought those guys did really, really well in what they accomplished last year. And I know they look down and feel like they didn't accomplish to what they should have. And, I, and we always agree, you know, kind of like what Coach just said, a, a state championship's the goal for everybody. Everybody's zero and zero, and everybody wants to go to the state championship. And, and that's, you know, that's the plan. That's, that's the expectation. But those guys, uh, you know, they, they did a really good job. And, of course, we've got some guys coming back this year, and, and you know, with McNamara and those guys, and we just got to execute. And, and we gotta, we got to take care of ourselves. It really doesn't matter who we play. If we don't block and tackle and run the right routes and make the right reads and, and hold on to the ball and, and cut down on the penalties, then it doesn't matter. So, you know, that's been our focus. Worry about ourselves. You know, take care of our responsibility. Let's talk a little bit about region outlook. So let's forget tonight's game. Coach Hughes, who's going to be the biggest competition in your league this year? We have, we have several, you know, two new teams with White House and White House Heritage. White House has a, a great running back, and they're going to be a handful to, to stop. And then, <clears> uh, <throat> you know, with Stewart County winning it and their quarterback being back, you just don't know. Well, that's our first region game. And, um, but I feel like overall the, the region is a lot more – there's a lot more quality right now. Like you, you really, it's really tough to pick our region right now. And well, I was shocked that we were picked to win the region again after we had lost to Stewart last year. Um, the coaches picked that. And I think a lot of that's based on history and not sure. what's going on now. Um, but I think we're gonna have some battles with White House, White House Heritage, Stewart County. And, um, and um, shoot, I think, you know, Cheatham County, Sycamore, the, the teams in there, they're all going to fight. You know, the thing about us, and I don't, I don't know if this is with Paige, but in our region, we just got a target on us. Like, everybody wants to beat us. So it's obvious when we meet as coaches, it's obvious when we, the, the, we're the target. And uh, so I used to like being the hunter and not the hunted, and now I feel like that's turned around. <laughs> that's over, there. Coach. Yeah, it's over. it is. It is. And, you know, it's a different mindset. Our kids know, sure. you know, last year we laid an egg at Stewart County. We, we should have won that game. And they won the region championship and all that, and that's been boiling over. So that first game with Stewart County, it'll be a good, uh, good test for us to see if we're ready to take back control of this region. Uh, but the new teams, there's so much unknown. Dropping from 4A, you just don't know what White House and White House Heritage are bringing. You don't know if it's right. like, are we going to match up? Are they going to be way more physical and bigger than us? Is it? So you know, we'll know more going in. But I expect everybody in our region to be very competitive, and I think top to bottom we're better region than we've ever been. And, uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. Definitely agree with that. Coach Rathbone, you lose a couple of region uh, opponents, one being Summit, and you bring in Nolensville, which I think is exciting. You and Nolensville, I think that's going to really make that a neat rivalry uh, with Nolensville being in your league. And I know you probably wouldn't say this, Coach, but I think going into it, a lot of people feel like Nolensville and your team will be the teams to beat. Yeah, I definitely agree with the Nolansville part. You know, <laughs> I, knew, I knew he would say that. You know, he's, he's very humble. The, the thing about Franklin County and Columbia, they're very athletic, and you never know what you're going to get out of those teams. If, they are, if they're on that particular night, they're going to be tough to beat because they have so many athletes just running around the field. Nolansville's so well coached, you know, and they got, they got athletes as well, and they've had a lot of experience getting to the semis the last couple of years. Uh, I, would, I would honestly think they would be the favorites in our region. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I welcome Nolansville and Spring Hill. If you get rid of Shelbyville and, and Summit, <laughs> I'll make that trade all day long. You know, now we've got that one game that really won Nolansville game instead of those other two teams. But uh, I really think Nolansville is going to be tough to deal with. And, but we look forward. we got it forward to it. we got them at home. And uh, it's way on down the line. Try not to think about that right now. But uh, I would think that would be kind of the order. I do put us up there somewhere as long as we can get some things corrected. But uh, a lot of good athletes in our region for sure. But uh, I do feel like our region got a little bit weaker than it has in the past by losing Summit and, and Shelbyville for sure, which is a good thing for us. Well, let's talk about Class 5A too, Coach. <clears throat> when you're looking about, and you talked about like Coach Hughes did, ultimately you'd love to have a state championship. Coach Hughes mentioned a team like Alcoa. But teams that are going to be missing from 5A, not only Summit, but Beach High School, another team that's done really well over the years, you have to look at that and go, okay, if we can get deep, maybe that, that's kind of nice to have those teams gone. Henry County, I think a lot of people feel like might be uh, the class of 5A. But if, as you look sort of on down the road or just take a look at 5A in general, 
I think it opens it up a little bit. Yeah, if you look who our region matches up with in the, in the playoffs, you know, now you're talking about teams that are dropping down from 6A. So we match up with the Mount Juliet's and the Wilson Central's and the New Green Hills, and, and that's, that's a tough region, the Hill, Hillsboro. Um, so that's a tough region. You know, they got athletes where they just throw the ball out there and you got to tackle them in space. That's, that's, that's rough, uh, <laughs> especially for our team. So we're, we're just not blessed with that kind of speed. So, and our kids know it. So we got to be secure in our angles and things like that. But really where you match up in the playoffs, that really, that really depends a lot, you know, I mean, so uh, I'm anxious to see how the season folds out and, and, and we'll go from there and we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Coach Hughes, let's talk a little offense. Uh, we're going to talk about both your teams now more specifically. The quarterback position, I always think of you really, and, and I, I think of you and Coach Blade both in this respect. Regardless of who the quarterback is, you seem to get a lot of production back there. Uh, you're losing a guy like Riley Bennett, obviously a great leader for your team, great leader in the school. But you've kind of got a two-headed monster here a little bit now. You've got Kennedy Pendergrass, you've got Mays McCoy. You've got some choices back there. Again, it's somebody that's going to be new under center, but you had that before with Riley too. So talk about the quarterback position and what your expectations are. Mays is more of a drop-back, tall, athletic, uh, looks like a quarterback. And Kennedy's more of that wild, uh, you know, read option, run around and throw the ball. Uh, both of them are playmakers. Um, and, uh, you know, Kennedy being two years older right now, he's getting the nod. Uh, but Mays is definitely going to be a great quarterback for us in the future. And right now, um, I think Kennedy's playing as well as Riley was last year and, and maybe even the quarterbacks before. And we've had the region quarterback of the year for the last – I think eight to nine years. Wow! So uh, we've been very lucky that we've had good quarterbacks. Now we don't have offers from Colorado State, but um, <laughs> at the same time, I think our guys get a little overlooked in 3A, and and I've I've had some great athletes there, just not with the size and stature which Mays is going to bring to us because he has that size and stature. And multi-sport athletes, you know, one thing you guys know, you hear me talk about. I love the multi-sport athlete. I think you guys do too. You know, something, and I'm gonna say this about Coach Hughes here and maybe embarrass him a little bit, which is hard to do. Mark Kenzer, who is now the Fine Arts Director here for Williamson County Schools. I told him you guys were coming in today. Took our band director. Yes, yeah. and he told me, he said, let me tell you about Coach Hughes. He's all about people doing as much as they can, whether totally. it be a sport, whatever. He told me, and I didn't know this, that Jacob Clevenger is quite the trumpet player. Yes. And he said, you actually talked about, hey, look, if we need to try to get him in March, and, and Mr. Kenzer had to back you off and say, it's hey, okay, Coach, it's okay. I wouldn't have let Jacob play halftime show. You know, we'd have <laughs> talked to him about what he needed to do after he come up, because um, he's a great wrestler, too. And, you know, Mays and Kennedy, both super basketball players, they're going to be a handful to deal with on the basketball court. But I think, especially at a 3A school, if you don't have multiple sport athletes, you're not going to be good overall. And our goal at Fairview is to be good at everything, not just good at football, not just good at basketball. Baseball, baseball program is really booming. Um, our girls' sports are really doing well, and we're going to have a pretty good girls' flag football team too, I think. Absolutely. I can't wait to talk about that more <laughs> on down the line. Coach Rathbone, I know you're the same way. You and I have had a lot of talks about trying to work it out where guys can play more than one sport. Let's talk a little bit about your quarterback. Obviously, a guy that's getting a lot of attention, Jake McNamara. He's a commit to Colorado State. When you talk about your offense, obviously you got to start with Jake. Yeah, I mean he's the one. He's a he's a gym nut. You know, he's a, he's a he's never going to be outworked by any anybody. And and me and his dad talked. He goes to all these camps, and if you go to a one day camp, he's, he's not going to blow you off the map. He's not going to just uh, wow you with the with the skills and the arm strength stuff like that. But if you go to a multi day camp, he is going to blow him off the map with the with the board work and learning coverages and and making the checks and all that, and that's what he brings. I mean, he's the best leader I've ever been around. And I've had a lot of good quarterbacks, you know, one's coaching at Western Kentucky and Cade Walker and all those guys. He is by far the best leader. He, uh, he brings everybody else up. He's full of energy. He's exciting. Um, he's talking trash to our defense, trying to make them better. <laughs> you know, he's not afraid of getting hit. So, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's an incredible young man, and he's going to do some special things at Colorado State, and hopefully we can protect him and do some special things this year. Well, I think that's probably going to happen. Coach Hughes, let's talk a little defense here. We mentioned Mr. Clevenger, mm -hmm. also Sam Hammond. Mm -hmm. 
what are your expectations this year for your defense? Um, Coach King and Coach Jackson are doing a good job getting them ready. Um, we're we're going to play really aggressive. We're going to, you know, we have the same, uh, you know, tackling in space, matching up, making sure there's not – McNamara is really good at finding an uncovered receiver and just giving him the ball right now. And if we don't line up right and get everybody in the right place, it's going to be a long night. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't mind him having a good game, but I don't want him to set new records on our defense. So um, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that we can keep him in the pocket because he's really good at scrambling, really good at making plays with his feet. Um, but our defense is basically, we're we're going to be pretty big up front, and uh, and I feel like our linebackers come with with the right kind of intentions. Um, a little worried about the back end of our defense, young DBs, and that's always scary when you're placing a quarterback like uh, like him. So um, we just have to be sound, like he said. We've got to wrap up. We've got to be in the right position and, and not let somebody just run wide open down the field because he'll find them and it'll be a quick six. Coach Rathbone, I know your defense, you, know, you and I talked the other day, uh, you were a little disappointed in the showing last week. You played a good Marshall County team in a jamboree. I know you had some guys out, but when you and I talked, you're like, hey, we've got we to get this fixed pretty quick on defense. Yeah, and, and watching film, it probably wasn't as bad as what it looked like on Friday night. You know, so a couple of simple adjustments, personnel replacements. Um, but we just, we got to set the edge. I mean, with what they do, they're going to pound the ball, so we got to be secure in the middle. And we worked hard on that. And they like to throw the reverses and the jet sweeps in there. So we're going, you know, we got to set the edge, turn it back inside, and make tackles, and, and ultimately come up and hit and wrap up. And if we do those things, then, then it'll, it'll be an improvement from what we did at Marshall County because we did none of those things. So, and that's what we've really stressed this week. And we've had a great week of practice so far. I, I, really, I really do have to say that. We, it's been a physical practice. Um, we've hit both days, even though I'm usually not that guy that likes to hit on game week. But uh, it's, it, the, the intensity has been there, and we got to have that Friday night. Well, obviously, sometimes those things happen where maybe – that's a good thing, especially if it's a jamboree or a scrimmage that ultimately doesn't really matter. So we, maybe bad for Fairview, but maybe that was a good thing for well, the Page scrimmage, defense. We scrimmage Marshall County too, so we know Marshall County is a top ten for a team. Sure. So that they're gonna they made us look bad several times too. So it's not like they were getting run up down the field on somebody that's not that good. Uh, Marshall County's loaded, and they'll make a run at the state championship this year, I think. Well, on a team like that, it probably shows up a little bit more in a scrimmage or jamboree when you're not really scheming for what they do, correct? Am I right in saying that? Well, Rathbone ran two plays the whole scrimmage, so he didn't really show a whole lot. So he just, uh... We definitely didn't game plan. <laughs> if I had it to do over again, I probably would go back. You know, when that blood pressure hits 250 and above, you know, you probably wish you would have done a little bit more to game plan. I, when mean, I, when I, I won't make Coach, that mistake again. I talked to Coach Osteen, he said, Rathbone didn't show you nothing because they were vanilla <laughs> as it can be. He said uh, they did not even try to, like, open it up or anything. He said it was uh, – Smart man, Coach. Yeah. Smart. He, he's got it all Man. close to the vest. Yeah. We, got, we, got to, we got to get the little things right. You know? <laughs> when we get that, then we'll start doing something else. So, Hey, let's talk about this. And I know uh, when we were doing this same show a couple years ago, we talked about a big special teams play that had happened. And listen, it's important in any game, but it seems like in this one there's been some special teams plays that have happened that have really been a big part of the outcome of the game. We'll start with Coach Hughes. Is special teams, is that one of the things, especially in game one, that you're a little bit nervous about because maybe it's hard to yeah, get I, ready f without playing a game? I would say a lot nervous. I think, it, and I don't know if Rathbone feels this way, but that's the most, the part that you're most nervous about because you just don't know. You never get live in scrimmages or jamboree with special teams. So you really, you know, are they going to hold out the guys on the punt? Are they going to, you know, are we going to cover up a fake? Paige is really good at fake punts. And, uh, you know, those kind of things, kickoffs, coverage. Are we going to wrap up and make the tackle? Is somebody going to squeeze through there and break one? You know, so we, we rep it and we practice it, but it is hard to emulate live reps with special teams, even when you go live with the twos are nowhere near as good as the pages ones. So it's tough to get a good look, and I, and I am worried about that. But I, I do like our kicker. I like our punter. I like our, you know, our returners. I just think we've got to be really solid and not lose the game on special teams. Coach Rathbone? Yeah, and that's where – the reason it's so scary the first game is because that's where the most disciplined aspect of football comes in. Staying in your lanes, you know, you have one guy get out of the lane, you got that big hole, and, 
and now it's athlete against athlete trying to run him down and, and just getting the daggum snaps, the PAT snaps and the punt snaps and, and the timing and all that, everything's kind of off that first game. So one little mistake, block punt, block field goal, whatever, and, and then, it's, uh, then it's just hectic. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, trust me, a lot of sleep has been lost last <laughs> week over that kind of stuff. Coach Rathbone, you mentioned the lanes. and co It seems like to me, too, again, outside looking in, the guy didn't coach football, it seems like special teams, too. Uh, you like that energy, you like that excitement, but if you overdo that, that's when those things are going to happen, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was watching a middle school game last week, and the guys are so excited on the first punt, they run, well, they run past the punt, <laughs> and they catch it, and they run all the way back for a touchdown. You know, it's things like that that, that these kids don't think of, and you got to constantly remind them. And, and, and simplistic things like when the blocker sets up, you know, and he's trying to turn you in, don't run across his face because they need you to wash you down, try to hit it off his rear end. And, it's a lot, of, a lot of coaching technique that we just don't think of when you just sit and watch a game. And, and one mistake on special teams can cost you. Coach Hughes, we'll start with you. I know we're getting short on time here. I know you guys have a lot to do today to get ready for tonight's game. Give me some keys tonight. It can be offensively or defensively. You're successful if what happens? Well, Coach Jackson always says it's a really simple game. If you block and you tackle, you win. So if we can control the line of scrimmage on both sides and if we can tackle those guys in space and keep McNamara from running around, then we should have success. If we don't, it'll be a long night. Coach Rathbone? Well, Coach Hughes, they always like to pressure, you know, bring the blitz. We've got to be able to pick that up and we've got to be solid on our offense line. I mean, you talked about this last week uh, and that's my biggest concern. We've got to be solid on offense line and our front seven on defense and stop the power game and, and don't let them drag the clock out and shorten the game. You know, we want possessions and we want plays. And if we can do those things and get them off the field and get the ball to our guys in space and make their guys tackle us in space, then, then we, we like our, our chances. Well, gentlemen, we're looking forward to it. Again, appreciate you being here. Looking forward to tonight's battle of 840. Should be fun. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.